Hey, good Tuesday morning, everybody. It's Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich. Quick update on Hurricane Delta, which is becoming a monster storm as far as intensity. It's small in size, but it is a very compact and intense hurricane. And we're going to talk about some of the impacts for the Gulf Coast, but how this could change the impacts for the weekend forecast for the Carolinas. So we'll start with the forecast track first. This is the latest advisory just came in. You could see winds are at 115 miles per hour. It's been rapidly intensified, which means it's dropped 24 millibars in less than 24 hours. It's actually been more than that. It's actually increased about 50 to 60 miles per hour in the last day and a half. So it's just been incredible, the rapid intensification. Um, and nothing really is going to stop it until it gets to the Yucatan Peninsula. So it could go to Cat 4, Cat 5 categories um, maybe in the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. Certainly going to be Cat 4. So forecast is 140 mile per hour winds. Interaction with the Yucatan Peninsula weakens it briefly. Then it gets back into an, an area where it can intensify again to a Category 4. But as it gets closer to the coast, there is some good news at least. Um, the water temperatures near the, the northern Gulf Coast are a little bit cooler, and there is going to be some shear. The problem is once you get a storm to be that strong, it's hard to weaken it rapidly. So while it probably won't get stronger after it reaches, reaches peak intensity here in the Gulf, it's probably going to be slowly weakening as it makes uh, landfall. The problem is storm surge is still built up. So this really doesn't impact storm surge. And remember, categories are just about the wind. It has nothing to do with storm surge and rainfall. So please take that into account when you're looking at these. So let's look at the visible image. You can see it is a small compact storm. So when I say it's a monster, I say it's a monster for intensity. It's a very small storm. It's basically right there and a very pinhole eye. So while it's very intense, the winds don't extend very far from the center right now. That's the visible image. Here's the infrared, and you can see a small little eye trying to form there. And it's been indicated from the hurricane hunters and on radar out of the Cayman Islands. The thing that I watch is how symmetrical it is. It's almost a perfect circle, the central dense overcast. Um, we call storms that do this, they become annular, especially if they get a little pinhole eye. That means they're perfectly symmetrical and have that little eye wall. So those are typically very strong storms. And once they gain that inner core, this thing can, can withstand wind shear and dry air much better. So these smaller storms tend to be much more, um, what, what would I say, much more resilient to a lot of the environmental parameters that would typically dissipate a bigger, more disorganized system. So that's why there's a concern that the system is going to maintain its strength. So where is it going? Let's look at that good old spaghetti plots. You can see now that we have hurricane hunter data in there, the models are kind of all come together pretty well here. So pretty co uh, consistent track towards uh, the Yucatan Peninsula right near Cozumel could be really bad news for Cancun. I mean, this would be a direct hit from a significant hurricane. Um, and then moving into the Gulf. Now the questions are how sharp this churn is. Um, you could see very good clustering with them guidance, taking it towards the central Louisiana coast. But I have noticed a little bit of a trend in the last couple of model runs. Some of the global models are starting to shift west just a hair. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that it's moving northwest a little bit quicker than anticipated. So that it's probably going to get further west before it makes that turn. And then inland. So for the Carolinas, what are we looking at? Uh, one thing I notice is this western track takes m fewer tracks over the Carolinas. So this means the storm's going to pass to our west more. Now, typically any storm passing to our west is a problem for rainfall, but actually the further west it goes, it kind of takes the deeper moisture there. So this could have some implications on the amounts of rain we see, but certainly could affect the timing too. I think Saturday could be more light scattered showers and drizzle and Sunday be more of the soaker. So that's something that we have to watch, uh, especially um, as we get into the weekend. So real quick look at some of the rainfall forecasts for the Carolinas. Um, you could see, I'm going to go day by day. So this is today, tomorrow, um, Friday. So the next three days, you know, basically through Friday, um, next three and a half days, no rain at all expected in our area. But then we go into early Saturday. So Friday night and Saturday, some light rain is indicated in the Western Carolinas. And then we go into Sunday morning. So Saturday night into Sunday morning. Notice the big jump in totals. So you're seeing this kind of slow down a little bit with Saturday night and Sunday becoming more prevalent. And then we go through Sunday afternoon into Monday morning, um, and you can see the highest totals in the mountains. And this would make sense. If there's a track to our west, the flow around the system is going to be like this. So the mountains interact with that southeast flow, and we see higher totals there. Now, 
that's the rainfall part of this. Intensity wise, I didn't show this real quick just to show you the intensity forecast. Um, you could see why the Hurricane Center has it at Cat 4, but notice a couple of these up in the Cat 5 categories um, and then dropping off inland. So for the Carolinas, at least, we're not worried about wind or severe weather at this point. It's primarily talking more about the potential for heavy rain. And I always like to show this wide view. So I have the track and the consensus model track. So you could see everything pretty far to the west and kind of taking it right there into areas around Lafayette, Louisiana, um, Homa, um, down in this area, central Louisiana Gulf Coast. But if I was from Houston to Pensacola, I would still, um, I would be very, and I really worry about southwest Louisiana. If this, this shifts to the west, we could have some problems. So how is this going to develop and then move our way? Let's turn everything off here, and we'll do some long-range guidance here. Um, I always like throwing everything on here so you can see. So this is the GFS model, um, and you can see there's our system down there. We're going to put this into motion. Um, next couple of days, obviously no issues, so we'll go through today pretty quickly. We'll go into Thursday. Uh, you can see, look at that thing. I mean, that's, that's just crazy, even on the global guidance to see a, a hurricane that impressive. So we're going to go into Saturday morning. So let me stop this at Saturday morning real quickly. We'll go all the way to Saturday morning. We'll stop it right about 8 a.m. Saturday morning. So 8 a.m. Saturday morning, you can see the hurricane is over Louisiana, Mississippi. Really scattered stuff over the Carolinas. We've got high pressure off the East Coast. Um, we've got low pressure up here. So we've got a front here. We've got high pressure here, so it's providing a little bit of an easterly wind. We've got southerly winds coming here. So some kind of like wedge, and we call this sometimes an in situ wedge, which means it's not a perfect cold air damming setup, but there's some dry air getting pushed against the mountains at the same time moisture is riding up and over it. So I would think Saturday is going to be more cloudy, drizzly, misty kind of day. Um, we'll go through the day and notice there's no real heavy rain over the Carolinas um, Saturday. This is 2 o'clock Saturday afternoon. Again, I'll go in closer so you can see it. We'll go into Saturday night. This is 5 p.m. Uh, this is 8 p.m. So you're not, you're just seeing light rain. So Saturday, why it doesn't look to be a great day. It's not going to be like a washout or just downpours all day. It's more drizzly, misty, cloudy, low clouds kind of day. Um, we go into Sunday morning. This is where things start to ramp. This is 2 a.m. Sunday morning. Notice we start to see some heavy rain. The system is still way back here in Mississippi. Um, and then we go into Sunday morning at 8 a.m heavier rain this is more steady rain so this is where things start ramping up the main system is still here but we've got the influence of southerly winds and southeasterly winds thanks to high pressure off the coast so the combination of the two systems help funnel moisture in here so we go through the day on sunday sunday's looking like the day that it's going to be if i were to classify it as a washout um, pretty much rains all day long and then going into monday morning things start to break up and by monday We'll probably have some lingering showers and clouds, but the main system looks like it tracks to our north, and then we start to see drier air. And again, this is the next cold front coming in. So let's go back real quickly, and we'll show you how this unfolds. You know, Saturday's not that bad. It's it's not going to be a, a great day, but it's not going to be a total washout. The, the the lesser of the two days, I guess, is going to be Sunday as far as the quality of weather. Um, and Saturday looks scattered. So we'll keep an eye on it again. A couple inches, the mountains and foothills certainly have a better chance of seeing heavy rain, but keep an eye on this track. If it keeps shifting west, this really could make Saturday better, and Sunday could become the worst day of this, maybe even lingering into Monday. Of course, I'll have updates throughout the afternoon. If you have friends or family on the Gulf Coast, please tell them be ready, especially in Louisiana. This could be a significant hurricane um, here in the month of October.